Welcome to the One to Nine podcast for interesting insights and knowledge from animals and other beings within multidimensional realms. Hello, Diana. <laughs> Hello, Karen. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm actually pretty good. <laughs> good. I think we're both bubbly today. Uh, yes, I think you're just a little bubblier than I am, but... We got a bubbly kitten here, and the other one seemed to disappear. The bubbly kitten is kind of like a sleep on the <laughs> sofa. It is. So, we have a surprise guest today. It's a surprise to me, at least. It's a surprise to me, too, because I just came in, sat down, and then I realized, oh, there's somebody sitting on the far left corner of Karen's sofa. And it's uh, As long as it's not sitting on my hat. No, no, no. I mean, even if they were sitting on your hat, it wouldn't do anything to it. Okay. So. So who is here? Well, it it's. Uh, it seems to be, and I haven't asked anything of it yet. A very delicate, delicate creature. A very delicate creature. Oh my. Del- I feel like. Delicate. Yeah, delicate. I feel like my voice should get more delicate then, because we have a, a delicate being with us. Yeah. So, meaning that not necess- the energy is not necessarily delicate, but you know, just like fairies and flowers. Mm-hmm. You know, they're kind of like you think of them as more delicate. Right. Okay. This this being, energy, whatever, is more delicate. And where's the energy from? Um. She is saying she's from the the air, the skies, um, not from the earth. And um, oh, she's a oh, the spirit of all small birds. The spirit of all small birds. Yeah, not big birds. Uh huh. Right? Small birds. Small birds, like songbirds and sparrows. Sparrows and, and okay. Thrushes and robins. Blue, blue birds and cardinals. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. To, to communicate things about so sort of like the how how all animals communicate. Okay. Now, does she take the form of a bird sitting there? No, it just seems kind of like this shimmery kind of energy that's not like I said, it's very delicate. Okay. Um, one can discern kind of like wings in there and feathers. Not necessarily a bird head, but. Um, Wings and feathers, like very ethereal. Okay. Now, do you think Ellie, who's sitting right next to this bird, a uh, delicate bird essence, is knows that it's the bird essence? I don't think so. <laughs> or she wouldn't be investigating. Right. So this is where the communication comes in, right? Okay. Meaning right. that I guess the bird energy, or the bird the spirit of all small birds, is doesn't make herself out as being sort of like prey or anything like that. Oh, okay. For cats. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's it's sitting here. It decided to come down in harmony with with everything else that's here. Cats included. Okay. And is there, so she came here today to give us some information about interspecies communications. Yes. And their message is just all love. Right. <laughs> I mean, a lot all. of things have a message of love, right? Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. But, I mean, with this one, with this spirit of small birds, you can tell that the vibration is, like, really, really high. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. And um, they want to they wanna send that message out in that there's kind of like this fable about the, the law, somebody, an animal crossing the river, and it takes over an animal that can't swim or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like in my nature or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I forget exactly what the fable is, but once they reach the other side, the animal who's been done the carrying eats the one that has been carried over. Mm -hmm. Saying that, oh, it's in my nature, right? Right. So anyway, every single being on earth, us included, we all have what's in our natures. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's part of it's not bad, it's not good. It's like... Right, it's just human nature. It's just human nature, just like cats. Chase after birds. Chase after birds and chase mm-hmm. after mice and rats and kill them, eat them, that's in their nature, mm-hmm. right? Dolphins eat fish. 
right? It's in their nature, right? All, all to maintain balance and harmony. So having nature is part of balance and harmony. Right, exactly. And that balance and harmony also does include death and dying. Of course. Otherwise, what would be the point of being born if you never died? <laughs> well, I think that'd be great, actually. If you never, if you were born and you never died? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, but... I mean, we're born, but we, we also actually never die, also. Well, uh, we're talking about our existence here on Earth, not our spirit existence, right? Right. Our soul's experience. So death is part of the human experience, though. It is. And she's saying that's all part of balance and harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay. And people should not worry about Understand it. that more. Mm -hmm. That's with us, this, this Spirit small bird. Spirit of small birds. Spirit of small birds. This, it would be in the nature of animals to want to have fun, too, right? Oh, yeah. That's why they sing. Right. The birds sing to have fun. They, yeah, they're, because they're happy. They're happy and they sing. And they sing sometimes when they're not so happy, too. Well, yeah. It's a but, different sound. Yeah. But they, you know, I mean, they want to spread happiness also. Mm -hmm. So that's why they fly around and, um, you know, do, if you've ever seen swallows, right? They're like, whoa, there's big, giant, not herds of them, but flocks, I think. Flocks of them, you know, and they're just swooping down and around. And it's like, wow. Yeah, they're a, a lot of fun. So the, the most of that is this being this with us saying is, is for fun and for entertainment for humans and the rest of the world? No, 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 not necessarily. They, they do it because they're having fun. They're having fun. And when they lift their vibration, then it lifts our vibration. Right. Yes. So that's how they have fun as they swoop around in the sky and they, they, some sing, some swoop. I don't know if the swallow is known for its song, but it's certainly known for its mm -hmm. formations in mm -hmm. the sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they go out and gather twigs and make their nests and hop around. You know, I mean, everything is... Everything is done with a lightness, lightness of being. That's like right. Lightness of being. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I have a couple cardinals that come quite often to my backyard and chirp away. Um, it's almost as if they think I'll feed them. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha. Have okay. you ever tried to? Oh, yeah. I do it. Oh, too. okay. And so I'll take food out. And, of course, they have to fly away while I'm feeding them. And then they come back and they'll eat. Mm -hmm. um, so they're saying thank you. They are saying thank you? Mm-hmm. You hearing that through the... Spirit being, or just no, through not them? Through, through them. Oh, through the cardinals are saying thanks yeah. for feeding us when we ask. Yes. All right. You're welcome. Then, then they said, keep doing it in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big bag of food. It just came in, so I have plenty of food for the whole winter. Uh huh. Okay. They're saying, oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. So the does the spirit bird? Do they worry about things like we have? exterminated a few species of birds over time. Is that also part of the balance or imbalance? Balance? Well. Like the carrier pigeons long gone and stuff like that. Right. Okay. It is what it is. They don't judge. Mm -hmm. They don't worry. They don't hold anything against us. You know, it's like they what? live for themselves and they live for us. Okay. Now, every morning I have a I have a big pine tree, a Leland cypress in my backyard, and it, any given morning you can look into the tree and see sparrows quietly sitting everywhere and doves sitting everywhere and occasionally a couple other types of birds um, sitting there patiently waiting for the hour the cats get to go out and play in the backyard to be done so they can come down and eat. <laughs> and sometimes it looks like they're all kind of happy in my backyard. Is that... Happy sitting in the tree? Yeah, happy sitting in the tree waiting and happy being having a place. Because I live in the city, like I mentioned, and having a place that's, um, you know, a, a dense big pine tree like that that's there year-round for protection with lots of branches to sit on. 
They don't have to sit next to each other. They can each have their own branch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't... Maybe we think of birds as kind of like not having any particular homes, right? Mm -hmm. But they do. You know, I mean, they've got their places that they want. They want to stay in. You know, they want to reside in. Mm -hmm. It's like... As, so is my backyard one of them? Yeah. They love that tree. Um, and it, well, they're not specifically saying thank you for the tree, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> because you, you don't, you didn't really plant the tree. Yes, I did. You did? I did plant the tree. I planted every tree in my backyard. <laughs> really? That yeah. big tree? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've well. I've been here a long time. <laughs> oh, they didn't know that. Well, okay. Now they're saying thank you. Thank you for our home. <laughs> that's my intention to have a little forest back there. Yeah. Inner city forest, and that's what I have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, you know, thank you for feeding us. <laughs> You're welcome. So is there anything that we as humans can do to be more appreciative of the birds? I mean, I know a bunch of us already do things like bird watching and we love to look at bird pictures and we have the Audubon Society that kind of honors birds and whatnot. Right. Well, I mean, there's lots of people now who kind of like pay attention to what they're planting in their yards and their gardens and put in sort of like specific plants or flowers that attract certain kinds of birds. I like the sunflowers attract the finches. Right. So, um, you know, she's saying, if you want to, you can do more of that. What about spraying for bugs? Do they like... No, 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 don't, don't spray any pesticides. <laughs> they don't like the no. spray. No, 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 no. They want more bugs? Is most of them eat bugs or most of them eat seeds? They really eat anything. Bugs and seeds? Well, they eat... Nectar. Nectar. <laughs> Would they like me to put a hummingbird feeder in my backyard? There are hummingbirds around here. I know. I just haven't put one in my backyard. Yeah, they'd like it. Yeah. Ooh, we'd come around. <laughs> they'd come around? Yeah. All right, well, I'll consider that. Just, uh, I don't think I have too many flowers that they'd like, except maybe morning glories. They're like crumpet-shaped flowers. That's what their beaks are for. Uh-huh. Okay, so another thing um, humans can do, kind of like foster... A relationship between like birds is to uh, okay she's saying flights of fancy flights of fancy flights of fancy at first I was thinking that she was saying okay you know we should kind of think about flying more in our imaginations oh because um, I don't know about you probably lots of people have this right you know this fabulous dreams where I'd be flying and it was just incredible, you know. I'd be taken up from the earth, f slowly floating up, and then I'd be flying and just looking down and seeing everything, right? And You're so, sounding more like an eagle or a, a hawk or something that flies up and well, looks yeah, down. No, I mean you can you can fly up to whatever height you want and then look down, right? Mm -hmm. um, so at first, she th I thought she was saying that, right? Because you can, you don't you can do that not only when you're when you're asleep and dreaming, you can just think about that. Right, absolutely. Right, if you just you know just use relaxing somewhere, read a story about flying around like a bird and you'll, yeah. you're up there, or even on a flying carpet. Mm -hmm. um, but then that changed into flights of fancy that she was saying, so. I think she's saying, yeah, okay, use your imagination to take you to places that you haven't been to and that you want to go to. Places meaning not geographic places, but just kind of like... Um, States of consciousness? It could be whatever whatever it is you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, creative space or... Uh, a visual space where you kind of like see whatever it is you want to see colors and different shapes oh, okay so if like you want to go up and um, fly around a little cloud bow in and out of the colors and lay on the clouds you could just do that 
It's yeah. Imagination. She's saying do more of it. Do more of that. Do yeah. more of that. Exactly. Right. Interesting. And what will that do for us to do more of that? It will. It will make us live more in the moment and also to make us, okay, enable us to be more open to kind of like all the communication that's actually happening all the time between mm. everything. Okay. So do birds, when we run into birds, do they have little special messages for us? Like, like for instance, there was a bird that came and landed on the car, I think, on my car. There's a little baby bird that came and landed on my car. Oh, it like fell out of its nest or whatever. Maybe it fell out of its nest. And my, someone that I know was, was absolutely convinced that there was a message from that bird. But I think the bird lived. Oh, good. Well, I don't know, it wasn't there the next morning. Right, well, it could have fallen off your car. Uh, it was able to fly. Oh, maybe it flew away. It might have gotten, you know, I don't know what happened to it. I put it up on my car so it wouldn't be bothered by. Right. Um, it seemed to have been stunned. It might have been like learning to fly and didn't quite mm -hmm. have it together yet. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it said thank you. I don't know if it just, you know. I think she's saying that, that whatever, that bird, don't worry about the, whatever happened to it. It was, they're okay. They're okay? Yeah, they're okay. okay. But in terms of a specific message from individual birds, she's saying that one didn't have a specific message. Mm -hmm. But there's, to, to, to convey something mm -hmm. to somebody. Um, they could show up through a bird. Right, yeah. Especially if that loved one really liked that type of bird. Or... Exactly, exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. She's somehow sort of like using the wings like she's conducting something. <laughs> so, and she's you know, a big orchestra. It's meaning sort of like music, music. We should also, in this Flights of Fancy, some people will hear music. Now, does this bird song music, or no. is this any kind of music? Any kind of music. Interesting. So when we're imagining does ourselves, they, okay, they, the 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 small birds, mm -hmm. the, the spirit of the small birds, saying they love all kinds of sound. Mm -hmm. Well, not not bad sound, not sort of like unharmonious sounds. They like harmonious like acid sound. rock. Well, no, like I said, it's got a... <laughs> they like know. more classical or... You know, it's, I mean, anything that okay. sounds good to them. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to get an well, idea. Well, like, obviously, car crashing. They don't like that. Right? Oh, they don't like the sound of car crashing. Yeah, right. Okay. Or big machines big drilling machines, or yes. something like that. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Children playing, they like that sound. Yeah, because people are laughing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, oh, and where was she going with this? So she wanted to, she was orchestrating music, saying add music to your imagination when you're... Yeah, she's saying some people will actually hear music. They will automatically hear music when they sit down and imagine themselves like a bird flitting around to places. Some people will, and so okay. if, if you don't automatically hear that, you can always try, try to add that. Add that, okay. Yeah, I mean, whatever songs you like, just mm -hmm. kind of like replay so, them in your head. So can bird songs actually be calming for humans to listen to? And a lot of people have like bird songs on as a, like a way to calm nervous systems and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. Are they done specifically to do that or um, is it just the nature of... The birds. Well, well, okay, you know, I mean, they've got all kinds of bird sounds, right? Mm -hmm. um, the ones that sort of like alert them of dangers, they, they're not going to be calming. Right. Right. Um, but the but the happy ones, mm -hmm. the ones that they sing when they're happy, those will be calming. Yeah. Um, how does 
do the birds are the birds upset at all by a lot of artificial energies running through the airwaves like EMFs and things like that do they do they get bothered by that stuff okay keep in mind that this these are, this is the spirit of the small songbirds right, right? Mm-hmm. so she's saying yeah that's it's less of a factor for them because I guess they're kind of like closer to the ground. I know, but there's a tower right here. It's only 10 feet off the ground. Yeah. Either they've gotten used to it in a short space of time, or, you know, it's just... Just not that bad. It's just not that bad because there's so many other kind of like cosmic sounds in the air mm-hmm. anyway. Okay. And we can't hear. Right. You know, the, what they hear. The ultra low frequency sounds that we can't, audi- that aren't audible to us are all over the place. Yeah. So, she's saying that they're, they've had to deal with all this stuff for a long time anyway. Oh, okay. So, no big deal. Yeah. Is there a place in the world where the birds are the happiest? Oh. No, she's saying no. And in, in, in general, they they find happiness wherever they are. And even though they can't, they don't really travel that long mm-hmm. distances, right? They communicate with every every other bird in the world too. And so the birds, the small birds, don't necessarily have really long lives. Like something like the dolphins or the yeah other cetaceans. How does that affect them? Does that keep them lighter? Sense that keeps them lighter beings, less serious. She, uh, she's saying she doesn't. She doesn't think so. Just because you live longer in if in a physical body. Does it mean you're more serious? <laughs> well, she's saying she also thinks that if they were to live longer in their physical bodies, she doesn't think they'd be more serious. They'd just be the same as they are now. Yeah, maybe just a little bit wiser. Mm-hmm. Do they? Does she have any idea how they came to be? Um, oh, because we're we're kind of confused sometimes by evolution you know we've got first life that we humans can conceive of were a single cell bacterias or something and then you know one thing led to another and we had more and more complex lives but how did we branch off to where some some fly and some walk and some swim and where do they fit into that okay well she's saying they've got their own origin stories they have their own origin, so they didn't actually evolve from a piece of a bacteria on Earth like that's theorized. Uh, they have their own origin stories, right? And this is their story. Okay. okay, they came out of, or it's not really evolved, but it's sort of like, and it's not really raindrops, drops of something mm-hmm. that were coming down on the Earth. From another galaxy, another From star. From someplace else. Okay. Right? And they turned into birds. Like they're falling down. And then at some point, you know, they go in through the Earth's atmosphere. And at some point, when they're closer to the to the soil, I mean, not that, not that high up, mm-hmm. they just turn into birds. They, that's their origin that's story. That's their origin story. And that's the small bird origin story? Yeah. And the difference in birds was primarily from different sources? Um, uh, yeah, because where, these drops were coming from, I know, a star or stars that had exploded or some things had come off of them. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all kinds of stuff coming off, right. things everywhere, right? Right. And if it was some kind of... And it's not just one thing, it's a whole Mm -hmm. bunch of different things. And if it was sort of like a solid stone or 
whatever, it just turned into energy drops. Mm. I think that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. I saw, you know, what could be um, a piece of cosmic debris the other night when we were sailing over Lake Erie. A number of us saw it, and it streaked through the sky, and it was rainbow color. It's iridescent. Mm. And um, poof, it was gone. Yeah. I wondered if a new species of bird came out of that. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> well, so is there a time that that happened and it really hasn't happened again? Or is... Uh, it, yeah, she says it, it happened. Most of it happened a long time ago. Long, long, long time And it ago. hasn't continued to happen. No, it doesn't happen continuously. Okay, no. and then so some of the species that came down that way through that origin story are have disappeared for various sundry reasons and no new ones have appeared. Uh, she's saying, I don't know, they could have, they could have appeared. Um, new ones could have appeared. But, um, okay. Not so, like it was at the beginning. I know that. <laughs> just a long time ago. Just a long, long time, time ago. ago. Like um, 50,000 years or more like I don't know hundred thousand years there there were there were animals already on the earth were the humans already on the earth um yes and no prehistoric humans like, yeah uh-huh a different species of humans than yeah. are here now right okay so they came in when there was a different species of humans yeah yeah ah, somebody out there listening is going to be able to figure out about when that was right the early species early species of humans yeah I mean you know saying that ah, you know dates don't matter it's like no they don't matter but it's kind of fun to every once in a while because we're very linear in our thinking here on earth it's kind of fun every once in a while to try and piece together time like a puzzle that's yeah, true but then she's saying okay you know this may have happened at Carl like originally in a linear fashion but because you saw that cosmic debris changing into all these colors mm -hmm. It's like it also is showing you that it's not, time is not linear. That's the second meteorite I've seen. I don't know how many people get lucky enough to see one, but mm -hmm. it's the second one I've seen. But this one was during night sky, so it was very bright and colorful. The one I saw before was during the day, and I it was still a light, but it looked like a white light, mm -hmm. which must have been pretty big for me to see it during the day. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think the advice to sum up a little bit about this, you know, the birds have their own origin story, the birds are generally happy and full of love and their songs are here to entertain themselves, their song and their 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 movement, the way they live, you know, the way they dance in the sky and Okay, from she's place. also saying feathers are important. Feathers are important. Yeah. What about the Peoples like the Hawaiians, the early Hawaiians would make all their um, royal garb out of feathers, their long cloaks and hats and stuff out of feathers. Was that like, what was that? What were they doing when they did that? Well, the birds it was like were, an homage to the birds. It was an homage to the birds. Yeah. However, if they were actually killing the birds to get their feathers, it's not really an homage. Well, I don't know if they did that or I not. I don't know that either. But in times past, feathers of certain species of birds were very prized for articles of clothing, right? Just like, you know. Oh, yeah. And a lot of them were killed off. Exactly. That. Yeah. But a lot of them, and a lot of those birds are coming back and are, it's illegal to kill a lot of birds now. Um, and we've learned, you know, like we, I think we've dumbed it down a little bit. Like we use more like peacock feathers where they are constantly shedding them. Um, right. Right. So, I mean, reason. she's saying with feathers that you just, ordinary people just find, mm -hmm. right? They will bring you luck. Oh. So but, but if you're going, if you're buying feathers that have been kind of like harvested or, mm -hmm. you know, not in good ways, right? Mm -hmm. They will not bring you luck. Yeah. I think most of countries or most places have outlawed, but who knows, you know, it's hard to say when you... Um, okay, let me ask him a good question about down. So you have 
lots and lots of stuff that are made from down and goose feathers and stuff like that. What do they think about that? Oh, they think that if this is something that actually provides humans with the necessary, uh, with something that they need, mm -hmm. it's good. I mean, they're, they're, the birds are not killed for their down. No, they're not, but who knows if they're sustainably harvested or not. Well, like I said, it's like... So how, so there, if you're buying down, you should figure that out? Like, what is, how, how well sourced was it? Yeah, or you can kind of feel it, too. Yeah, you can sense it if it's... If you've got a down pillow and you're kind of like sensing that this energy energy of a dead bird is in there, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't think so much dead birds, but I was thinking birds that may not have been treated real well. Well, that negative, any kind of negative right. energy is, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, don't, don't buy that pillow, don't use that pillow. So just sense energy. Oh, yeah, and then kind of like get the negative energy to get yeah. taken up. Right, okay. Dissipate it, exercise it from the pillows. Or right. the down comforters or whatever. Right. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, a lot of times we tell stories about birds to children. Oh, you mean like the uh, the stork bringing the baby? Oh, well, that's a big bird story, but yeah. Yeah, that is a big bird story. But now I think there's little children's books that always incorporate little birds lots of times. Um, seems like our society is a lot about... You know, introducing little children to birds and then introducing, then when you become a certain age and you have a little more free time, you become a bird watcher and you become all interested in birds again. And then there's this huge swath of time in between. We don't think much about birds from like, you know. Maybe. Yeah, and they're saying, and she is saying, okay, let's change that. Oh, and just incorporate. Pay more attention to birds. Okay. What and about what she's suggesting, you know, like yeah. fancy and whatever. What about all the people that keep birds in their house? Like for a long time, I had these little tiny cutest finches in the world in my house. I love those little birds. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like with any other kind of animal companion mm -hmm. that, that people have as companions, right? Don't feel bad about if they, if that, if that's, if that's what their life has been, mm -hmm. don't think about, oh yeah, if I set it free, it's going to be happier. No. Well, I didn't necessarily think that about them, but I just wondered if being in a little cage was a happy time for them. Well, you know. I wasn't about to let them go. I didn't feel like they would have survived. And no, there's no way. Yeah, right. And they wouldn't have survived outside the cage either because my cats would have gotten them. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, she's saying sometimes it is what it is, right? Okay. And the little other birds, like the little parakeets and stuff like that, that people have in their houses and live a long time and really enjoy them. Mm -hmm. They're bringing happiness to their okay. human companions and the human companions are bringing happiness to their bird <laughs> companions. <laughs> All right. I mean, it always seems okay. You know, I mean, every once in a while, the birds, you get to bigger birds is a little different story. I know they said they like music that sounds good, but are we talking about uh, classical music where they have instruments that are somewhat high pitched like birds like violins and uh, flutes I was just saying you should try it out I mean like flute music do they like flute music you should try it out and okay. see, see what kinds of birds show up for different kinds of music alright I'll stick my little speaker out there tomorrow morning and <laughs> <laughs> see what happens if there are no birds in my tree, I'm trying a different style of music. <laughs> Interesting. So is there any last messages from the bird? Um, okay. Um, besides music, they also just love flowers. Uh -huh. saying, I was going to say plants, but she's saying flowers, flowers, the colors, you know. Plant, plant more flowers. For the yeah. birds. I mean, regular, just plants are green, but they love the colors. They love the colors. Yeah. Okay. So. Interesting. So make your garden colorful or yard colorful to attract more of the flower, uh, birds to it. Right. 
Yeah. It, it's kind of interesting that the goldfinch is like sunflowers and there are some, and uh, cardinals like, in particular, those little berries that are on the dogwood, red berries from the dogwood trees. and Yeah, it's weird, are, eh? Yeah, there's some colors that are uh, kind of funny. Because the, the, the colors have got the same vibrations. Right. As them, you know? So. Yeah. So as a cardinal in particular, that's a really high vibrating bird because of its cardinal color, cardinal red color. Is that... True. Well, they're all they're all high vibrating. Right. Um, they don't like to think of one as one as being more than okay. the other. It's like, but the cardinal is one of the few birds that really stands out for its coloring. Yeah. That you're talking about the male cardinal, though. Yes, I am just talking about the male cardinal. Right. But they both stand out for a little crest on their head. Yes. Yes. Um, this is a sore point among them. Oh, that one's more recognizable than another? So like the colorings of the male versus the female. She's oh. saying, yeah, no, well, let's not talk about that. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, you know, if the birds wore clothes like we humans do, you could sort of combat that and take care of it, mix things up like we do. You can't always tell who's a guy and a girl here because of what we wear. That's right. You yeah. know, we can change our I hair. Know, she's saying we're, we're, we're working on we're working on stuff. Okay. Even people like Mew don't have a compelling singing voice? She says, especially it's for those because you don't have to use your voice to sing. Oh. Right? Okay. That sounds like some of my friends would prefer that I don't use my voice to sing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Diana I, not being one of them. She, I, I cannot sing either, right? Oh. So, like when she says, sing with your heart, right? Sing with your heart. Okay. Means you can actually, if you can sing, right? Mm -hmm. Sing heartfeltly. But if you, if you can't sing, like me and Karen, well, you just sing internally with your heart. Oh, I can sing. Just no one wants to listen to me. <laughs> I just want to make that real clear. I can sing. <laughs> All right. I'll sing internally with my heart. Or <laughs> Diana can laugh, and that, that might make up for it. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you for being here. This is the spirit of the small birds. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Who would have expected that? I know, exactly. And she's saying, thank you so much. She's actually curtsying, bowing, right? She's very gracious. Ah, oh, that's right. awesome. Oh, now I can see her head. What, what does the head look like? It's a small bird head. A small bird with head. a small beak. Okay. That's all for this episode of the One to Nine Podcast. Thank you for listening and please sign up for our newsletter at one to nine podcast.com.